State lawmakers returned to Montpelier this week to start the second half of the biennium, picking up right where they left off in June. A little after 10 o'clock Wednesday morning, the House and Senate gaveled into session. Lawmakers seem pretty happy to be back and ready to get to work. Both chambers have towering Democratic majorities, able and, we know, willing to override Governor Phil Scott, as we saw them do over and over last session. So what would he say to them and to Vermonters watching and listening from home in his annual address? That is our focus this morning on the competing visions for the year ahead from the governor and statehouse leadership and the Democratic rank and file. Thursday's State of the State, a prelude to the budget address, which will follow later this month. But the governor's uh, Thursday speech to a joint session clearly imploring lawmakers to focus on what he considers the most important issues instead of everything. It was a 43-minute address. He was interrupted by applause 17 times. He focused on the new budget realities, the cost of living in Vermont, and making it no higher. I'm sure you're aware the federal government just announced its increase for those on Social Security, which is 3.2 percent. So if our seniors are expected to manage that, it seems as though we should do the same. Now, I'm a realist, and I know you have a supermajority. I know all too well. You've proven the final budget and the growing burden of taxes, fees, and other policy-driven costs is in your hands. So all I can do is make my case. We're joined now by NBC5 Statehouse reporter Stephen Biddix. Uh, Stephen, you were in the room, uh, and I was here in the studio, but it struck me that here we have you know, the, the nation's most popular governor, according to polling, who won in a landslide last time, as we know, who seemed to be saying, look, folks, I know you can override me uh, anytime you want. And in fact, the House did exactly that earlier in the day in the bill to uh, dramatically expand the bottle deposit law. It's, it's a little weird. Yes, it is, Stu, especially since the timing of this override was on the day of his state of the state. And we asked Speaker of the House, Jill Krowinski, if there was any intentionality behind that, which she said there wasn't, and it's just the way that the calendar and the schedule work. But Governor Scott has said he'd rather double down on recycling than expand that bottle redemption program. But we're already only one week into this session, and it's already very similar to last with the legislature overriding, not quite listening to him or working with him, which was one of the key points of his state of the state on Thursday, saying he understands they have a supermajority and understands they also have their priorities, but wants them to think more about Vermonters and seem to be speaking to those low to middle income Vermonters throughout his speech. And some of his key priorities this year are public safety and making the state more affordable. And he thinks one of the big overarching issues that could fix all of this in, is housing. And this is what he had to say about it on Thursday. We committed the funds and laid the groundwork. But if we don't truly address Act 250, we won't solve our housing crisis. Every single one of you and the people you represent need a voice in this debate. This issue is too important and too consequential for two committees and a couple of special interest groups to control the outcome. If we make common sense improvements, we can give young families the decent affordable house they need. We can offer seniors a chance to enjoy retirement without the burden of a large home they can't afford. And we can put homeless Vermonters in real homes, not overpriced hotel rooms we can't afford. <laughs> By jump-starting housing for working families, we can revitalize communities, refill our schools, and make our neighborhoods more inviting in all 14 counties. We can help solve the challenges we face funding health care and education climate change mitigation, IT infrastructure, and so much more. Housing is key. And it's something we can do right now. We'll be hearing uh, in a moment from the Democrats on, on the prospect of real Act 250 reform, but uh, I want to ask about the public safety theme from the governor. He mentioned 
the spike in violent crime in our state. Uh, what, is, what does reform mean uh, at the State House? Yes, too. So the governor said he acknowledges that the state has made some great progress in criminal justice reform, but in the last handful of years, re regards to violent crime, Vermont has gone from the second safest state in the country all the way to 18th. So we would like the legislature to get some of these policies and maybe take a step back as we've seen crime spike. And he says Vermont is starting to lose that Green Mountain state that they've always known, and he doesn't want it to get to that case. All right. Um, the prospect of a big property tax increase to pay for a K-12 education is also very much on the administration's mind. Yes, it is. I mean, that roughly 18.5% property tax, the governor says, is just inexcusable. Vermonters, as he said before, they can just not handle any more burden, any more taxes. And the legislature and Democrats have some of their ideas as well as the governor. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, as we haven't really seen any quite tangible plans mm -hmm. on how to decrease this so far. All right, here is some of the reaction from Democrats and others on the governor's call for Act 250 reform and spending restraint. This year there'll be a more, uh, I think, profound discussion of Act 250. Um, so certain areas of the state have made a strong argument that they have enough zoning and development guidance that they don't really need the extra level of Act 250. And so there's been a kind of a, an agreement reached between environmental groups and pro-development groups to look at the state in terms of different needs and different ways that Act 250 would come to bear or not. And if that agreement holds, then I think we may have the first real shot at modernizing Act 250 in years. One uh, area of disagreement with the governor involves overdose prevention sites. That's something the House and the Senate are now working on, and we believe it's a component that can make our community safer, reduce the amount of uh, syringe litter that is in Burlington and Brattleboro and Rutland, uh, and also save lives. The legislature is going to do the governor a favor when we write our budget because he's coming in with the oxygenated statistics. You know, he's saying it's going to hold his, his budget to 3%. Well, the cost of living is up 11%. So he's writing a budget where apparently he's going to make some hard decisions and cut things. Um, we know that he's going to cut essential, you know, things that Vermont there's consider essential that the legislature is going to have to put back. So we already know he's aiming low. We're going to have to aim to a reasonable place. We only have so much money and we have so many great things we'd like to do. We have to prioritize them. We have to put them in order and we have to think about those things that have real urgency. Housing, uh, the education issue, public safety, and uh, the demographics. All of those are the urgent issues. You know, it's not about the size of government. It's who it's helping. And we want to make sure it's helping low and middle income families. Some of the reaction uh, on those safe injection sites or harm reduction sites that you heard Senator Bruce speak about. In fact, the House is moving uh, at, at the end of the week. Yes, they are, Stu. It's probably the quickest moving bill we've had throughout this first week, already been taken up by multiple committees, hearing testimony, and it's something the governor is not necessarily going to be in support of, but it seems to be at the top of mind for a lot of Democratic leaders. And not clear how the Department of Justice uh, will feel either. Um, Stephen, where does flood recovery, you know, a lot of people are focusing on this still. Um, where does that factor in uh, to spending? Yes, too. This was a big talking point yesterday by Democratic lawmakers because Governor Scott didn't quite have any tangible plans in his state of the state that may be different in the budget address, but they were wanting to hear more about what he's going to do for flood recovery. We just saw an omnibus flood recovery bill introduced earlier this week by Washington County representatives and senators who were potentially hit the hardest by those July floods and even hit again just a month or so ago when we had that other storm. And so they weren't quite happy that there wasn't tangible, actionable plans in that state of the state. Well, it's going to be a heck of a session uh, coming up and you'll have a front row seat. Stephen Biddicks, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, Stu.